welcome to Plugged In. I'm Paul Galata, Senior Technology Specialist with Mauser Electronics, and with me today I have a guest. My name is Scott Kleinley. I'm the General Manager of Commercial Industrial for Amphenol. Today we're going to talk about lighting, specifically LED lighting. You know, lighting's changed over the last few generations, Scott. There's been a big transition from traditional lighting, from uh, the traditional incandescent bulb towards LED lighting, and it's just proliferating all over. Could you tell me what you think is uh, causing some of those transitions? Yeah, absolutely. So it's been going on for a couple of years, and this metamorphic change has been really driven by cost savings. So not only is it cheaper to utilize LED lighting, but also there's been trends towards further sensor integration. So you think about trends like smart city and sensors and making applications that are smarter, use less energy or save money. That's really what's been driving at the, at the high end, uh, the, cha- the proliferation of LED. And both of us as guys are uh, heavily involved in electronics and I think one of the other things that we can see with LEDs is an electronic semiconductor device. It takes advantage of so many things that you and I are thankful for from the electronics industry. The ability to be able to be quickly turned on and off, the ability to run at low voltage so it can save a lot of power, the ability to intelligently control it. Can you share a little bit about some of those uh, things that you're seeing that is making it so easy then for us to make new designs with LED lighting type of solutions as opposed to the old way. Yeah, I think that not only is there a push for smart city and smart building type applications, but there's a real push in the world for green applications that are not only save money for the building owner or the city occupant, that really helps the environment too. Anytime you can lo- use rather uh, less energy, uh, and I think you know you have some statistics about what is the energy use for typical lighting, depending on the city, depending on the application, can it be anywhere from you know 10 to 20 percent uh, usage of uh, lighting for an energy budget, and so the ability to add uh, any sort of savings, uh, whether it be proliferation from or trans- transition to uh, LED lighting. Uh, the integration of sensors in buildings or street lighting um, just really saves a lot of money. It adds a lot of value. I think there's a tremendous benefit from the way that this is moving with with LED lighting. Talk to me a little bit about how you think some of the standardization that's involved in LEDs is coming to play and helping drive that move forward. Yeah, so there's two really large standard bodies, uh, the NEMA and the Zaga uh, consortium. And really, when you think about standards, it's absolutely necessary because you have multiple players at various levels. So whether the luminaire manufacturers, uh, LED manufacturers, uh, integrators, suppliers, sensors manufacturers. So the, the necessity of standardization from a connectivity perspective is absolutely required to make sure that everything plugs together. So tell me about those organizations, both NEMA and Zaga. Are those, do those have governance from a country behind them or are they really an association of people getting together to, <coughs> to, to standardize? Tell me a little bit about how those came together. Yeah, so you know, like anything, a standard is a standard. There's always going to be some customization of a standard. So, uh, for the most part, the standard govern governors, uh, you know, what is to be done with the luminaire uh, and the connectivity. But we find that throughout the world, uh, each country will have their own specifics that they require. We're going to talk and kind of look at this LED um, lighting industry and kind of look at it across three different categories. I want to take a look at street lighting outdoor lighting and indoor lighting. Absolutely. So what is kind of the dominating uh, standardization that's applicable in street lighting? It depends where you're at, okay? So if you're in the Americas, you'll see, uh, and even China, uh, you'll see that uh, a strong prevalence of NEMA. Uh, In Europe, you'll see a stronger prevalence of Zaga. Uh, But you're also starting to see there where NEMA and Zaga are starting to come together uh, because a lot of these suppliers are global in nature. So uh, you will see suppliers that support both NEMA and Zaga standards. And you'll see products that, uh, 
you know, they're starting to, the lines are starting to blur. So they're, uh, you're really getting a lot of value out of these standards, but it really depends where you're at, which, which one is more prevalent. But your company supports both of these standards, Absolutely. right? And make sure that it's addressing the market, whether it's a NEMA focus, uh, ANSI, or whether it's a Zaga focus on that, that you can do both. Absolutely. Tell me about some of the things as we look at street lighting that are important to customers as they go in and do new designs. One of the things, for example, is they want to minimize the amount of replacement time that they have to go out and, and fix things. So how, what, what are some of the factors involved with uh, design related to reliability? Certainly ease of installation. So we, we, want to, we understand that the integrator, it, it takes time to roll a truck. If you have to roll a truck back out to the site, you've probably lost all of the margin on the deal uh, and then some. But probably one of the drivers is also flexibility. So you'll see that with the products, uh, you'll see that there is uh, standard products, there is uh, toolless products, so products you don't need tools, uh, which make it easy to install. And then you'll see products that are rotatable. And a rotatable product, what you're talking about is uh, maybe uh, directionalizing that sensor to where is the sunlight. And so you need to directionalize that product. So you see a lot of, I'll call it value in the product in making it flexible, um, easy to use uh, and easy to install. So as I'm familiar in the standard, there's a couple levels of the product that, that uh, these consist of, kind of a, a base, a receptacle, a, a dome, and a cap. Could you share a little bit about those four different categories and what are some of the key characteristics inside of each of those? Yeah, so typically um, you'll have a receptacle uh, which will bring uh, typically uh, the power and maybe um, the sensing contacts. And that's where you'd have a lot of focus, right? Yeah, well, but in addition to that, you're going to have gaskets that interface. Uh, you need to seal with a couple of things. You need to seal with the luminaire itself, and then you're also going to uh, have a, a dome or a cap um, so that will cover the uh, module that will ha take care of all the sensing activities. At the end of the day, the total solution, whether it is NEMA or Zaga uh, Book 18, is going to be an IP66 rating, so dust and moisture compliance. So you have to think about the street lights are going to exist 10, 20, 30 years and be out in the elements summer, fall, spring, and winter. Well, let's step from uh, street lighting. Could you uh, explain then the next uh major area of outdoor lighting. How is that different from street lighting? Yeah, in many cases it's very similar. So in street lighting you can see with products listed here, you know, you have products that are very much uh, tailored to the luminaire. So you may have a cast luminaire. These are meant to provide wires and connectivity inside of a street pole. Uh, interface with a luminaire in a standard fashion. Uh, integrate sensors um, you know, and those sensors, those sensors don't have to necessarily just be uh, light detection and lack of light detection. You can have other functionality like cameras and other things that can be integrated along with the street light. Outdoor lighting is very similar. That's really a lot. That's got to stand up to some strong, robust things. What I'm hearing you saying is that street lighting and outdoor both require high reliability, but they're tailored for the application. And what you're giving by providing these solutions is the customer downstream, the ability to adapt and tailor it, whether they're doing this for something like a highway or something like a building outdoor. And so in fact, street lighting is a, a segment of outdoor lighting. When we're speaking of uh, interfaces, there's something called DALI, Digital Addressable Lighting Interface. Could you share with our listeners a little bit about what that's about, particularly as it pertains to book 18, the outdoor aspect? Yeah, so for Zaga, again, it's an IP66 solution, but that uh, Dolly interface is really the connectivity that governs the interface to sensors and modules. Scott, one of the products that I'm familiar with that you make is called the MRD, and I know this is really critical in outdoor street lighting applications, but it can do a lot more. Could you share a little bit about the strengths of the MRD? So our MRD solution, uh, really rugged, uh, when you take a look at it, it's two through nine position, 10 amps per contact, uh, 500 volts AC, and that 10 amps is utilizing either 18 or 16 AWG cable. 
our FLH product is really utilitarian, two, three, four, and six position, three to seven amps, uh, depending on the AWG cable, 22 to 18 uh, AWG will get you the three to seven amps. And really, the designer, when they are looking at their application, there's two levels of uh, product performance that really drives their connector choice. Both are IP67 rated. So you got the solution for them no matter what they're doing. Absolutely. So even though we're speaking about LED lighting, a lot of your solutions are broader than that. Like the MRD, they're designed robustly and can cover even some applications that we're not specifically talking about today. Right, and so under the umbrella of smart building, there's multiple applications. And so HVAC, LED lighting, it's all about saving money, saving energy, but you still need to have a dust and moisture compliance solution that's IP rated. It's about designing in for that harsh environment and protecting it and building that in across the board so that no matter where you use it, it's, it's reliable and working. Well, Scott, as we're filming this today at uh, the Mauser headquarters, we're sitting under some building lights, some LED lights. The first in our building got installed a, a, a couple years back when, when LEDs were really coming to the forefront. And I know that's a huge part. That's this third area that we want to talk to about after street and outdoor, there's this indoor lighting. What do you see going on there? And talk to me a little bit about this this uh, Zaga 20, the specification that is one of the prevailing dominant uh, things that are controlling the standardization of indoor lighting. Yeah, so one of the largest um, markets within lighting is indoor commercial lighting. There's just, you know, 50, 60, 70 years of, pro of buildings that have fluorescent lighting. So when you think of the book 20, don't just think of new building design, new construction. There's also a huge market for um, retrofit and upgrade. And so with the Book 20, there's through Zaga, there's something called Dolly D4i certification. And what that does is assure the luminaire manufacturers that they're D4i certified that their products will be plug and play with sensor manufacturers that make the mating half of the Book 20 solution to make sure that integrator in the field um, can add a sensor either when it's installed or down the line. And here's the real key point. To add a sensor to a Dolly D4i certified luminaire, you don't need an electrician. The Book 20, you simply add the sensor when you put the, the luminaire in uh, the commercial building, or you can do it down the road uh, in years ahead. So it's got upgrade ability to your building. And you can add different sensors. They don't have to be just presence detection, light detection, you can motion detection, all kinds of different sensors. And think about this as we move forward in the future. There's going to be all kinds of new sensors. And this interface will assure that it's a standard. And so this standardization is making it so that whatever we put into place now, it becomes very easy to go in and make any type of adjustments or refinements as we move forward. Plug and play. Talk to me a little bit about um, your wire-to-wire -wire connectors, specifically as they work indoor. I know that's a huge area of emphasis as well. Yeah, so our wire-to-wire -wire solutions are the FLH product, which are really geared towards outdoor solutions. They're very similar connectors. Uh, the FLH, specifically wire-to-wire -wire outdoor, is the IP67 rating. It's two, three, four, and six position, seven amps, 250 volts AC and really is, I like to think of it as a, it's a very utilitarian, uh, super cost effective uh, outdoor wire to wire solution. And when you take a look at our MRD, just by looking at it, you can see uh, it's beefier, it's rugged. Both are IP67 rating, but you've got a full metal latch, something that's really rugged and durable. And while the FLH is also rugged and durable, think of them as levels of goodness, levels of performance. That's excellent. I think, you know, all of us can conceive that without that mechanical reliability, we would build this system of electronics that we're all expecting to last a long, long time. And yet, if we have a chink in the arm or somewhere in the system, and so it's so imperative that we may build things that are robust that can't be pulled apart or, or knocked apart. Believe me, our customers do some unbelievable testing to make sure that they really will stand the test of time. And that, to me, looks like one of the 
key most important things that you have to do is is so much of the solution that you're doing is to make it standard but to make very very high reliability so that it can match uh, these mechanical type of parts these electronic characteristics yeah and I would say that's a strength of Amphenol is knowledge about uh, sealed solutions IP solutions uh, solutions that can only be touch proof like IP20 but solutions that can be IP66 IP67 really stand the test of time. Is there anything in closing you'd like to say to uh, customers and designers for LED lighting? Yeah, so what really excites me, whether we're talking about green initiatives, saving money, uh, smart city, smart building type applications, we know engineers want choices. And so while we're governed by standards like NEMA and Zaga, we feel like we have a complete portfolio uh, offering different levels of interconnect, number of positions, different current ratings, with a lot of variability and solutions for the engineer to drive their application needs. Thanks for joining me, Scott. I appreciate your expertise on LED lighting, and thank you for joining us. Please join us in our next episode of Plugged In. Plugged In.